Once upon a time, there was a beginning. This beginning was one of wondrous light and dark, playing across the universe. From this play, sound was heard, and from sound came the first idea. The universe had the idea to create, and from the idea of creation came the form. Light shone upon the form, and in the center of the galaxy, consciousness was born. This was the consciousness of law, of spirit that holds all things together, woven to create life abundant. From this life abundant came the first guardians, the ancients and the cetaceans the holders of code and the original template. At an endless time ago, a cosmic battle between light and dark broke across the universe, centered around the destiny of planet Earth. In response, the ancients and the guardians descended into Oceania and joined with many life forms. And so our knowledge of ourselves began. They came in many forms. Some were star people. They remembered their origins and brought the seed of greater purpose. Some were cetaceans and dove deep into the waters and brought the seed of wisdom. The whales held the power to activate the humans along the line of the divine plan and so bring forth the greatest universal initiation the sacred connecting of all. I see you, human soul as I have always seen you. Do you remember when we were one formless force, swirling in space, dancing the dance of the star beings in infinite wisdom and grace? Do you remember when oneness split into two, light, dark, Life, death, truth, lies, male, female. Do you remember how light and dark, life and death, truth and lies, male and female, longed to find their way back to the feeling of one? Yet in the meeting of light and dark, color was born. In the meeting of life and death, love was born. In the meeting of truth and lies, freedom was born. In the meeting of male and female, you were born, I was born. I am whale. We live in liquid, close to the swirling chaos of the beginning. 
Our light forms the flow. Our sound holds the balance. Our song connects us all. We have heard your tales of how creation happened. Some say a bang, or that a god begat us. That there was only chaos in a void. All that was light lifted became heaven. All that was heavy fell, became the earth. One dewdrop descended and one rose from below. Their collision caused creation. Many ceased to wonder. In their addiction to the known, they bear the pain of separation from the nameless source and live in fear of death. In earlier times, before the attempts to destroy the wisdom of the indigenous, the true knowledge of nature held within the heart. Before the age of deceit, the addiction to power, the fear of the female, when you were innocent, the heavens seemed so much closer. In the whisper of the breeze, the voice of spirit was heard. In the play of light and shadow, the mysteries were seen. The beating drum lifted your bodies. Your dance was the heartbeat of the world. The earth was a garden. Spirits were everywhere. All was interconnection. A radiant web of creation woven from threads of light. But then you began to fall. You had to. You needed to know how everything fitted together. So you began to pull it apart, to weigh, to measure, to count and collect. To do this, you decided to kill. Your obsession with control, your desire for comfort, your wanting, your belief in your persona, the compulsion of your fears caused you to fight and to steal, to kill and to rape, to treat yourselves and the earth, your brothers and sisters, the plants and the beasts, and sometimes even your children as mere commodities. This descent, this forgetting, has cut you up and deafened your ears to the whispers of truth from beings that live in love. I am one of those beings, and I'm speaking to you because I heard your cry. What are we to do? Your question resounds through all worlds. It is heard by the trees and the stars, by the rain and the wind and the fire. It is heard by our mother, the earth, whose weeping soul heaves as she holds us to her heart. She has a wound. 
She has a fever. She sweats. She shakes. What are we to do? Her answers are revealed in the bend of every river, in the vein of every leaf, in the murmur of the silence, in the shapes between the hills, in the dancing of the dust as it lifts towards the light, she speaks. O oh, child of mine, know thyself. You are part of me, and I am part of you. The little things you do, the smiles you give each other, the way you help when someone has a need, the light within your eyes when you open to a stranger, your chuckle when you realize you were wrong. The intelligence you show in your design. The beauty of the art that you create. All of this I deeply love in you. But the time has come for you to face your shadow and recognize your true identity. O oh, child of mine, know thyself. You are more than just your personality, more than just your DNA, more than just a bunch of cells that live and then decay. The future flows towards you. If you learn to live within its flow, you will find the strength to initiate the changes that you seek. So clear the space that has been filled with information fed to you, with books you've read, with expectations and beliefs that you inherited. Ideas of good and bad so deeply rooted in your core, you hardly even know that they are there. In the empty space, you will find your true intent. Let it stream towards the stars. Their shining rays will guide you as you walk through the unknown. Their radiant love will warm you as you open to the source of all that is beautiful and true. O oh, child of mine, know thyself until you learn to see within the spirit the wisdom and the love of which you are made. The cycles of your suffering will repeat, and your despair will equal your defeat. The gates of grace are open, and ignorance is no longer a plea. Thus far, no further, are the words resounding through the sea. If you find a spring of silence in the chaos of your life, place your burning questions on the altar of your heart and listen to the subtle sense of knowing in your soul. Your listening will draw the path towards you. How deep into the silence dare you go? Silence is the temple in which the spirit speaks. Her word 
is a living force that bears within itself the heart of truth. When you hear her voice, you face a simple choice to trust or to deny. She leaves you free. When you speak with love and gratitude for what you have received and speak aloud your heart's intent, your word becomes a deed that acts within the cosmos as a source of strength and power. So the seeds of your intentions find the light they need to flower. I'm grateful for the love and I'm grateful for the pain. I'm grateful for the beauty of the softly falling rain. I'm grateful for the whispers of my angel in my ear. And I'm grateful for the space between my freedom and my fear. I intend to listen. I intend to hear. I intend to speak. I intend to be clear. I intend that my intentions only happen if they're right. I intend that my intentions lead us to the light. I see you, human soul, as you now see me. Remember, we are one formless being swirling in space, dancing the dance of the star beings at one in wisdom and grace. Imagine living in grace and gratitude, knowing what you came to do, doing the work that makes a change, being your own connection to all, centered in the feeling of trust and love, speaking our intent from a consciousness that is eternal, feeling the oneness with animals nature, Mother Earth, and the vast cosmos that surrounds us. We are waking, rising from our shadow, dreaming in the resurrection of spirit to be sustained in the circle of forgiveness, a blessing of oneness. Ho, ho, pono, pono.
the time 